Hello guys, welcome back to the video. Today we are reacting to I'm building a better YouTube by the game. So I really expect on three, two, one. Let's react. I'm sitting on the couch, and you know what that means. I got an issue I want to talk about. In the last six months, a bunch of YouTubers, viewers, heck, even people who work at YouTube itself have been calling me an OG YouTuber, saying things like, I've been on the platform for 10 years. MatPat's been around forever. Well, my friends, I'm here to set the record straight. Those are lies. I have been on YouTube for eight years, thank you very much. A long cry from 10 years. I'm not old man, MatPat. Don't send me out to pasture just yet. What, is it the beard? Is the beard making me look old? Is that it? Old man Matt Pat over the hill. Is it? Is this it? Facial hair? Dad bod. Did you just dad say bod. dad bod? Dad bods are beautiful. Not all bods. <laughs> <laughs> Meta theory. Hello, internet. Welcome to the couch. So, in my apparently long, long, long long history of YouTube, I've learned a lot, which is what today's video is about. The story I'm telling you today is about my quest to build a better YouTube. It starts as a bit of a downer, but it'll end on a note of hope. This isn't just me shouting into the void about the problems of the internet, it's about us here trying to make this place called YouTube a safer, more stable space for all its creators, large and small, brand safe or otherwise. In an ideal world, creators wouldn't need help. All of the extra stuff that I'm about to talk about just wouldn't matter because it'd be easy to work on YouTube and be a business and not get taken advantage of by sleazy people. But the reality is that if you've worked on this platform for any period of time, you know that there are hundreds if not thousands of companies out there looking to screw you over just to make a quick buck. So a little over a year ago, I uploaded these two videos where I talked candidly about me and 49 other channel creators losing over 1.7 million dollars of our earnings to a shady multi-channel network. My hair was pretty bad. That purple streak did not age well, old Matt Pat. Certainly did nothing to help my credibility in those videos, but the message was important, right? Shady companies are out there looking to exploit creators, and we all have to be more careful. In the years since uploading those videos, Steph and I and a legal team have learned more than I ever thought I would, and more than I care to know about shell corporations, corrupt businessmen, money laundering, and all those other crimes that people tend to commit in Batman movies. Now, if it looks like I've aged a bit in that amount of time, well, that's yeah. probably because of the beard, we already covered that, but all also, right. Because in part, it's probably true. There's nothing fun about people getting screwed over and having to come face to face with how crappy mankind can be to itself. Cause here's the tea spill, my friends. Ever since YouTube started making money for its creators, there have been a slew of slimy people looking to use us and lose us, squeeze us for all we're worth, burn us, burn you as the fan base, and then just move on to do the same thing on the next channel. Profit again, but leave us empty and ragged in their wake. And you can see why, right? Most of us were kids when we got big on the platform. Some of us still are, and some of us are so young that they can't make money anymore, but that's because of Kappa. The <laughs> long and short of it is that you have these sharks in the water, right? And they smell blood. They smell people who are successful and just want to create content and don't know the first thing about business, who don't want to be business owners. And so they swim on in, talk about how they can help, talk about how experienced they are, but they lie. And you, as the content creator, don't know what you don't know, you know? MCNs locking creators into lifelong contracts, literally lifelong, owning their content and careers like some kind of 1920s movie studio. Creators like Shane Dawson getting swindled by merch companies. You get seven. I'm so stupid. <laughs> I've been on YouTube for so long, and I literally, like, I've been getting cheated in my business relations. Beauty influencers getting cheated. Nikki tutorial with clap of Two Face. They gave her a flat fee of 50000 and that was it. She made no money from the pallets. Um, the brand went on to sell over $10 million of product. Heck, the thing that happened to us and Defy seems to be happening right now with the Me Too MCN. Anyway, today's video isn't about any of that, or at least not directly about any of that. Right. Those deals are all in the past. No, today's episode is about moving forward and making sure that something like that never happens again. 
Because those experiences made me want to change the system for the better and key someone's car. But mostly change the system for the better. And so we and other creators won't unfairly lose our money to shady business people ever again. Now, a lot of you are probably already aware of the long and proud history of this channel. It's time for a racist Christmas story. Yeah. The, the old days were bad. Very, very bad. We're fit to burst! Baby Yoda, dude. And then recording in the closet. There we go, recording in the closet. I don't know where he records now. Where does he record now? Where does he record his audio now? I don't know. And recording under a bed, I'm pretty sure he did. Do -do 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 -do. Dab to you too, sir. <laughs> the long and proud now being more he shows his face more on the two channels from theory and game theory so that's pretty cool and cringy history of this channel but what you might not know is that over the past eight years i've spent thousands of hours acting as an advocate for creators off camera I've consulted hundreds of channels individually. I've spent years talking at VidCon, teaching creators about optimization strategies and analytics. I've talked to media companies to educate them about the world of online creators and why we matter. I've spoken to the head of pretty much every department at YouTube, who I'm sure by this point are just sick of me, all beating the drum of why creators matter, why we're important, why we deserve respect. Because honestly, I like Team Internet. I think that team internet is awesome. Creators rock. They're just... This, yes, there can be consequences to those YouTube stunts. This Tampa incident shows how. This YouTuber claims he vaped Belle Delphine's $30 bath water. Uh, so great. No. Bird Most Box Challenge. Why blindfolding yourself and walking into walls is even more stupid than it sounds of the time. And so over the wow. last year when I wasn't writing scripts about the Infinity Gauntlet over on Film Theory, I was working on assembling my own Infinity Gauntlet here in real life. An Infinity Gauntlet filled with companies that YouTubers could trust, that would deliver on their promises, deliver a good product, and would be transparent and give fair deals. It's a gauntlet that would allow me to snap a better YouTube into existence. A paradise where creators are protected and can trust the people that they're working with, where channels of all different sizes and levels of brand safety can monetize their video without fear of yellow buttons raining from the heavens, where they don't have to fear unfair copyright claims. And while all of these things aren't 100% there, a lot of them are close enough that I can start talking to you about them now, and maybe you can take advantage of some of them and actually feel a little bit of that better world for yourself. Let's start with one of the biggest. Infinity Stone number one, copyright claiming on YouTube. Copyright Maybe claims. that's the reality stone since it's trying to keep content ownership real. Beholden to the proper rights owners? I don't know. This is a loose analogy. It's not perfect, okay? Anyway, unfair copyright claiming or copy striking has become this weapon that YouTubers are using against each other, companies use when they're mad at us. At best, copyright issues are annoying. At worst, they can take down your whole channel. And we realized a couple years ago that we needed to find a partner who could help us fight back and protect our footage online. We first asked YouTube for tighter restrictions on copyright claiming back in 2017, and to their credit, in 2019, they implemented the exact changes that we asked for, so thank you guys for that. Could have happened a little bit faster than two years, but still, you know, appreciate the effort there. All that right. being said, there's just some things that legally they can't do on the creator's behalf. There are hundreds of rips and re-uploads of content out there. People stealing a channel's content and then profiting off of it. There's also those instances where big media company X just doesn't want to play by the rules and still unfairly claims things. Well, that's why we took matters into our own hands. We started working with a company called Superbam about a year ago, Super which Bam. sadly isn't a DC Comics franchise. It's what's called a rights right. management company. They started in 2018 after they, like me, realized that creators were getting eaten alive by MCNs and agencies who weren't helping them with their copyright issues. When their owner, Ryan, started Superbam, the first people he talked to were Steph and I in our kitchen where all our employees worked because this is YouTube and that's where the business gets done. Now, fast forward two years later, and they're working with some of the most massive channels on YouTube, allowing us to protect ourselves from unfair re-uploads, but also counterclaiming our videos so that big media company X doesn't get 100% of the revenue if we just, you know, accidentally use a fraction of their song. Maybe they're only claiming like 
50% of the revenue or less. This way, there's someone out there looking out for our videos. And it at least makes it a lot harder for people to just unfairly strike us because they feel like it. No longer are copyright strikes inevitable. Add it to the gauntlet. Infinity Stone number two is the other thing that all us creators worry about. Monetization. Let's make that one the green stone, the time stone for all those dollar, dollar, dollar bills that YouTube creators are gonna start raking in. You see, getting ads on your channel used to only be something you could do through an MCN, which is how the multi-channel networks got so much power in the early days of YouTube. Now, ads are locked behind the YouTube Partner Program where you have to have a specific number of watch hours and a specific number of videos and subscribers to qualify. It's a good program, but I'm sure you've seen that it's not without its flaws, right? It's pretty easy to get onto the brand no-no list. Do you create edgy content? Demonetized. Content that might target kids? Demonetized. Anything pull- I just thought, uh, thank you for 150 subscribers. I, I forgot. I forgot. Thank you for 150 subscribers, everybody. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, I'm uh, the Try Not To Laugh video was supposed to be my 150 subscriber special, but I didn't mention it, I forgot to mention it, so, yeah, just, thank you for 150 subscribers. Yes. Political or LGBT plus or violent video games, yellow icon, yellow icon, yellow icon. Yellow icons for everyone. It's like the Oprah of demonetization. Is that a reference that people get anymore? Is that old man Matt Pat talking again? Damn it! Chris, am I really that old? No. <laughs> the uncertainty about what is and isn't allowed every time you upload is just awful. And the instability in your life that yellow buttons make is literally crippling. I mean, that is your paycheck every month. And to many creators out there, not knowing what that's gonna be, and more importantly, why that paycheck is slowly being eaten away? I mean, that's perhaps the single biggest contributor to creator depression and burnout here in 2020. And all of this is without even mentioning how adhering to vague brand safety standards has watered down content and ruined a lot of the authenticity that this platform was originally built on. So knowing that this is such a massive problem for creators, Steph and I have been having discussions with YouTube for the last year, trying to help them understand the scope of the problem. Anyway, I can't quite go into specific here just yet because it is still so early in the process actually sometimes game theory actually uh, copyright claims my videos and uh, yeah that's just something because uh, you know i'm reacting to the video it's not like a sliver but still there's still copyright claim my video so they're, they're probably the only channel that actually copyright claims my videos now because you know all right and honestly, there's a lot of confidentiality tied to this, but suffice it to say, we've been having a lot of success working alongside YouTube to brainstorm and build potential solutions. And it's important to call out, to their credit, YouTube has been incredibly receptive in all this. I know a lot of times YouTube gets a bad rap from us in the creator community. Yes, including this channel, but in this case, they understand the problem. And all the teams that we're working alongside care about finding solutions for it. All of us. All of us, both us and internally at YouTube, we've all done a lot of championing internally to try and find something that everyone can agree on. Like I said, I can't say a lot more than that right now, but after a year, coming up on like a year and a half, it seems like things are finally moving in the right direction. The ball is rolling and things are starting to happen, which in turn might solve a lot of issues with monetization that creators have been having for like, what, the last three years? or so, thereby make YouTube a more stable and satisfying career choice for more of the content creators from more of the verticals that exist here on the What is that? Is that Jojo Shield to be frank or what? I don't recognize that YouTube channel. I don't. Platform, different content types. Heck, even you edgy creators, great. There is still hope for you. I've not given up on you. So fingers crossed that these initial tests go well. If they do, I'll probably be able to let you know more about all of this then. It might be a bit premature to add it to the gauntlet, but you know what? I can't let spaces on this gauntlet be empty, right? Add in the green. Speaking of ways to earn money, let's all take right. a break from topics that are way too insider for viewers to care about and talk merchandise. merchandise. What stone is this gonna be? Um, let's call all it right. the blue space stone because it takes up space. 
in your closet. I don't know. This one's the hardest one to fit in, all right? Real all talk, right. most YouTuber merch is not great. Am I allowed to say this as a YouTuber? It, it's terrible. A lot of it is just bad. I'm sorry. I, I have to say it. Yeah, because a lot of YouTubers just get... If they have a really big following, they have like five over 100,000 subscribers and just release merch because... You know, they're, they're gonna make money out of it because they have a following and they're gonna plug it on their YouTube channel and then people are gonna buy it and they make money. Yeah. I'm ripping off the band-aid right here, but a lot of it just isn't super thoughtfully made and it's not great quality and it's expensive. I know, because I've ordered a lot of y'all's merch. I've talked to a lot of y'all's companies. I'm not gonna be spilling tea on anyone here because a lot of the problem is with the merch company itself and not with the YouTuber. We've talked to them all and we've seen a lot of their best samples and it's just bad. The whole point of being on YouTube is that you have your own unique community with its own look and feel and you've created this valuable brand that means something to you and to your audience. So why does every YouTuber have merch that just boils down to a logo printed on the front of a hoodie? It's not even printed on all that well. well a lot of it is made by a couple of big merch companies, just the same provider for the bulk of it. Right. And the way that these companies work is by buying a ton of wholesale fabric, and I mean hundreds of thousands of yards of wholesale fabric, and then they just make cookie cutter pieces. Dozens, dozens, hundreds, thousands, sweatshirt check, t-shirt check, hat check. Then they pressure their YouTubers that they represent into selling that stuff because they make zillions of the same black t-shirt and it's just sitting in a warehouse and they need to figure out a way to get rid of it. So you slap on a new name, a new logo, something vaguely trendy and relevant to that audience on the shirt, and boom, there you go, YouTuber merch. And really, historically, that's been the only option that YouTubers have. It's oh. very, very rare to find 100% custom clothing that is sourced by a YouTuber. You have stuff like right. Teddy Fresh and Suki Market that are semi-custom lines that do a ton of work, and Cassie Ho's blog -a lines are some of the only 100% custom sourced products I've seen across this platform. Most YouTubers can't manage something like that on their own, so they need some kind of third party, some kind of merch partner. Hence, why they end up with so many bad deals with merch companies that are pressuring them into selling the same old stuff for the same old junky revenue splits. So instead of going with a merch company that's already out there, we took a chance on two guys who just wanted to create a solution for better YouTuber merch. We helped them start Creator Inc. from the ground up. We were literally their only client for almost a year. The first time that we met with them, they sat us down and reviewed merch vocabulary words because they knew that if we were educated, we would then be empowered to make smarter decisions about what we wanted to deliver to our audience and not get screwed over. They showed us their financials, they explained exactly where the money was going and where the merch was coming from. We are really uptight. Full stop, period. I don't know if you can tell, we're super type A. We are really, really uptight though when it comes to our merch because all right. I don't know, it's, it's, it's like your fans are holding a physical representation of you and your brand in their hands and I, I, I've never really understood why people aren't more picky about what they're sending out to their fans. But anyway, Creator Inc. is the only company that we'll work with when it comes to merch because they're the only one who doesn't have just a giant warehouse full of sweatshirts somewhere waiting to get sold, which means that there's no reason to sell anything if it isn't right for you guys watching, for your audience, for our audience. If you've ever ordered merch from us, you know that almost everything we do is what's called cut and sew. It means that we are sew. literally designing each item from scratch. We are sourcing the fabric, we are figuring out how to get it made, and then we're figuring out how to get it into everyone's hands. This is not a merch ad, by the way. I don't even All have right. a merch release ready right now, which come to think of it was pretty poor planning on my part. Should have thought of that one a little bit better. Anyway, kind of kicking myself, but you know what? One of the reasons why is that this kind of stuff takes time to make, especially when you're custom making things. It just yields a better product, and maybe that's the reason why people don't care as much. We're just, again, type A. We care too much. Anyway, consider that space stone number three. Fill up the space in the closet. Next up, the power stone, because knowledge is power, and here on YouTube, data is the knowledge that you need to succeed. Now, I've been harping about YouTube analytics for years. I talk about it at VidCon every year. I've done consulting with YouTube analytics since 2012 for a bunch of different creators. Back in the day, I used to teach people about this crazy new idea, wait for it, called watch time. 
and no one believed me back then. And we see how important that metric is now. Now, in their defense, at the time, I looked like a 12-year-old who was dressed like a 40-year-old stockbroker, so that might have hurt my credibility a little bit. Point is, there were supposed to be all these businesses out there that were helping creators understand their analytics and optimizing their channels, but they never did. So. I created my own systems where I calculated ratios like subscribers per thousand views and 30 day averages, engagement ratios, all of this stuff, all of which are standard data points that the agencies use now. Nowadays, YouTube analytics is a lot better than it used to be, but it still only lets you look at your own channel data, which okay, makes a ton of sense. You don't want to share the data from a bunch of other people. But what if I wanted to find a new channel to collab with that had roughly the same size as my channel? Or what if I wanted to know which creators are on the rise, what kind of content they're making, what keywords they're using in their titles? What if I want to know the hottest topics to cover so I can either ride those trends or avoid them at all costs to try and create a new trend? Well, for that, right. I helped develop gospel stats. Starting gospel back in 2016, stats. Steph and I started advising two guys who, like us, wanted to create a data tool for YouTubers that people would actually use. Think Social Blade, but with a lot more features and without the annoying layout. Or if you're an industry insider, think Tubular Labs, but you can actually afford it without mortgaging your house for the monthly subscription fees. You probably haven't heard about gospel stats because oh, it's not it. quite public yet and it's not ready for prime time, but it's getting close getting real close and I'll be talking about it more when it is and it's gonna be awesome and yes mr. beast I know that you've requested access to it and don't worry you're on the wait list already twice I see you I know you're just as big of a data junkie as I am embrace it my friend embrace the purple power stone and last but certainly not least the right. soul stone the soul I think we can all agree that we've been disappointed to some extent that the quote-unquote soul of YouTube, the creators have been lost to some of the big media companies, right? The Jimmy Fallon, the late night shows of the world used to be the ones that we would complain about, but now it's just like anyone who does entertainment is here on YouTube and those channels are big, big celebrities are here and that's great. It's good for the ecosystem, but you know, some of the soul has been lost. And a lot of this goes back to profitability and overall public perception. You see, this one is about how YouTubers are viewed by the larger entertainment universe. Up to now, All YouTube right. first media companies, companies like Theorist Inc., us, have been second class citizen to marketers and brands out there who could be sponsoring us or working with us. We get brand deals, absolutely, but old school media companies, think Vogue or Disney Fox, HBO, whatever, have been doing way more than that. Why don't YouTubers do more with the big advertisers of the world? Well, honestly, it's not that the advertisers are bad or ignoring YouTube or something. One of the biggest reasons is because big media companies are just that. They're big. If you think about a company like Viacom, they have dozens of TV networks, not just a couple of large right. YouTube channels. When advertisers see those huge audiences and people watching all over the world, they pay attention. They can use up their marketing budget in one place. They can reach a ton of people and basically know what they're getting. YouTubers, even some of the biggest in the world, just aren't big enough to make a dent like that. And advertisers don't know most YouTube channels. There's just too many out there to know. So how do creators compete? How do YouTubers make themselves big enough to win back the soul of the platform? Well, last year I started a group alongside three other big YouTube companies. You know them because they have channels like Good Mythical Morning, Binging with Babish, FBE, even Dead Meat. We teamed up to form a brand new group, The Avengers of YouTube. <laughs> Not really, I'm just caught up with the stupid gauntlet analogy. No, a right. coalition of channels that's now going out to big brands as a group, directly in a way that's never been done before. It's not an MCN, no one gets anyone's AdSense, no one owns any part of anyone else. Instead, it's like the biggest YouTube collab that's ever been done at the company level, at a time to help promote one another, to promote what it means to be a YouTube creator, to show that YouTube creators, people who grew up on this platform, are big enough and serious enough and important enough to compete with the Viacoms and Condé Nasts and yes, even the Disneys. It's exciting. Ooh. For the first time ever, YouTube YouTube companies can offer what's called enterprise level solutions, which is like complete business school jargon, but in plain English it just means that we're big enough to do the same things as Vogue or Condé Nast or some of the other big media companies out there who have had these huge advantages for years. Will it be successful? Will it change the way that YouTube companies are treated? I don't know, but I've never seen this done before and as someone who's a big believer in the power of collaboration and a big believer in the power of YouTube creators, I think that this has the potential to change the entire industry. Wish us luck and sorry it's not a service that you can just call all up yet. It's still too early in the game for anything like that, but it is something that is so important and something that is so big that we've been working on in the background that I just needed to talk about it here. And 
that's it for now in my quest to build a better YouTube, for structuring out this infinity gauntlet. Some of it, like Super Bam and Creator Inc., they're already available for creators to start taking advantage of. Have those conversations with those guys. These teams are great and they care first and foremost about helping out the creator ecosystem, respecting who we are and what we do. Other stuff are still in the process as we run final tests and hopefully prove how valuable they are. The point of all of this, this entire video today, is that YouTubers just deserve to work with people that they trust, and they deserve to be able to talk about the business side of what they do. Yes, sometimes we make videos where we mold weird soap hands in our kitchen. Sometimes- I made that awful soap hand by Jenna Marbles. We build robots Whoa. in our kitchen. So the Breakfast Machine by Simone Geertz. Sometimes we're just sitting and crying. Trisha Trisha Paytas crying by Trisha Paytas. On our kitchen floor. We are doing a lot of things in the kitchen, by the way. But we're all kind of going through the same stuff. And through this video and through all of these behind the scenes efforts, I just want to make it okay to talk about the stuff we're going through. And more importantly, do something about it. Over the last eight years, this channel has been working behind the scenes as a sort of canary in the coal mine of sorts for a lot of new things in this industry, right? There's a new company to work with. Well, we'll talk to them, see what they have to say. New YouTube beta program out there. Sure, turn on that wacky new product feature and we'll give it a whirl. In the end, Mellow Vision. I hope, I hope that was real. I really do. It's always been with the goal to better ourselves and better this ecosystem for all of us, creators and viewers alike. We are the future of entertainment here on YouTube. Each and every person who runs a channel out there, you are a business owner, whether you realize it or not. Never anticipated being an entrepreneur, never wanted to be an entrepreneur, but here I am. And you deserve right. partners who aren't gonna screw you over. Someone who's gonna respect you and the work that you're doing. And as someone who's been there, old man MatPat, been there for a long time, and as a result has seen a lot of things, both the good and the bad. The point of all of this is that just trying to help. And uh, by the way, sorry if you're a viewer of this channel and you're hoping for anything remotely video game related in this video. That was uh, not the day for you to tune in, I'm afraid. So yeah. no squirming out of that one for me. But hopefully you found it interesting. Behind the scenes business of YouTube is always pretty scandalous, pretty, pretty edgy, right? Let's face it, you're probably not even watching at this point. If you are watching, comment squeegee in the comments below because- I can't because I don't have Wi-Fi on this. Funny word, and I want to see the different spellings of squeegee that exist out there. Later this week, don't worry, we're back to regularly scheduled game theory programming. And in the meantime, remember, this was not a theory. This was me trying to do my part to make YouTube just a little bit better. Thanks for watching. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Of course, peace on the Peace. Peace. Thank you for 150 subscribers. Actually, 151 now. I don't know how many. Thank you.